and everything's being recorded and Stella is translating in, into Spanish as we speak. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead with your question, Sarah. Okay. So this question is about the TI grant and just a little bit of clarification, hopefully around what is meant by both direct services and the capacity building. So I think what the question was, the capacity building um, feels clearer than what might be intended through the direct services. Uh, so any information about that would be helpful. Um, and then also, if you're able to speak to the type of evaluation processes that you have in mind for the TI grant or what you might be looking for in, in the application, that would be helpful as well. And I know those are big questions, so mm -hmm. um, any information is helpful. And maybe I'll just start off saying to Sarah that um, like Nicole and I, and, and probably even to some extent Alex, may not be able to like give you specific answers to those questions, partly just because of the, our role, like it's not mm -hmm. to try to interpret or, or <laughs> demystify the RFP. So like some of those questions we can kind of talk through to see, okay, is there, like we might look at the RFP to see, okay, what does it say? And like how, you know, what are some ways to think about the way it's phrased there? And if you're still feeling like, okay, that question didn't quite get answered, like that would be a good one to send to the county email address, the core funding at santacruzcounty.us, so that then it, it kind of forces or, or, you know, means that then internally HSC has to take a look at that and figure out how to respond to it and provide some clarity that then is the official answer versus I mean, we can, we can talk through like in general program planning or evaluation, like for any proposal, like here's how you might think about that, which I know you know really well too. Um, but that's kind of like the level that we can um, provide guidance on or like how to use some of the core tools to then kind of craft your response or structure the response for those particular questions. Um, yeah, that makes sense to me. I understand. Um, well, that would be fine for uh, for me or for us to send those questions to HSD and see if we can get a little bit more clarity. Um, maybe on the evaluation, I'm guessing with the core tools, that might be something that you've sort of thought through is how, is how um, we might use those core tools for evaluation and um, so that, you know, that might be one way to get at that second question, possibly. Um, yeah, can you do, and again, this is also up to you, like how much you want to say, especially since this is being recorded and others might see it, like what the, like what kind of is triggering the question or like what are some of the preliminary ideas or thoughts that are coming up around the proposal that are then leading to the questions around evaluation and maybe if we can... Going yeah, that way, just, we might be able to help think through like ways to think about those questions. Yeah, thank you. It's so early in the process, so I'm feeling like um, it's tricky to, and like in my case, I don't want to speak on behalf of, of folks and get it not right or, or slightly wrong. And so I'm, I'm nervous about that on my end. Um, so let me see what I might be able to ask or kind of think through. We've started on a results chain and and, and so that's going to be guiding I think a lot of the proposal and there might be some specific questions there. So have just a minute to take a look at that, see if we can get more specific. Sarah, while you're looking um, just of general interest and support. So there are some upcoming trainings that are going to get into the core tools in a bit more detail. Um, so the continuum of results and evidence, which is our uh, think like an evaluator cheat sheet, um, is one of them. And that is that has some suggestions for um, where people might place a, a program, an existing program or a planned program on a continuum of um, knowledge, information, data, about 
effectiveness and what you might want to ask yourself about additional data that would tell you more if, if your interest were in moving somewhere else on that continuum, which may or may not be true. So a lot of ifs there, but that's, um, that's one place that suggests the types of data. Then there are um, the program strategies and outcomes in, in the core portion of data share um, has some ideas about some of the progressions of different kinds of changes that a program might want to achieve um, and the relationship between some program level outcomes and some broader community impacts. And so that also might be a place to look for how to characterize the, um, the types of changes that could be measured or sought and the kinds of metrics that are associated with different things. So that's another place to just look for ideas. Um, yeah, I think both of those would, or all of those would be, would be helpful. Um, yeah, I think the, the interesting and fun challenge is the balance of capacity building and direct service. And that is also where the question is. And so when I'm looking at the results chain that folks have started to develop, I, I can see, um, you know, just it, it's, a, it's a difficult question to answer. I don't know how, um, I don't know how to phrase it differently. And I also would imagine it would be difficult to answer um, at this point. So I think we can bring that one to HSD and just see if there's any more clarity there. Mm -hmm. I am definitely up for um, attending those upcoming um, workshops and just seeing how to how to link this better with the, the thinking and all the work that's gone into core. I think that that's going to be really useful. I'm just, I'm rereading the, the capacity question under what should be done. Yeah, and I guess like when I look at the, you know, the scoring criteria in the RFP, I think probably some helpful things to, or that could be helpful to just to dissect a little bit more with, with your group is, Thinking about, you know, and this goes back to, um, it's great that you're already starting or they're already starting on a results chain. I think that'll be really helpful because um, if you keep going back to that question of, you know, to what extent will what you're proposing impact racial inequities, right? Um, and the more that you can define like what it is that you're trying to impact and what are those, you know, disparities or inequities that you're seeing, what data, you know, supports that. Um, description and what it is that you're proposing, like how and why you think that will close some of those disparities or address the disparities. Um, then it's kind of a, okay, so how much of that in terms of being able to create that impact and close those disparities how much of that is done through direct services that you're that they're being proposed and if there's some if part of being able to deliver those direct services requires some capacity building so that you can collectively or that you know the collaborative can you know collectively measure and and you know create that data or implement a shared approach or framework um you know like if it's a new model or something like that and um, that's kind of like a you're starting with defining your the needs and the results or outcomes and then describing like what it is that you're doing in order to get to those results um i think the intent of that and i think this language is in the rfp like the intent of the targeted impact tier really is Still about how how is this going to directly benefit the community and improve community health and well-being? But if there's an aspect of that in terms of capacity building, that in order to create that kind of impact, there needs to be some, you know, training or you know, systems development or things like that. 
um, then there's, you know, room for that. Just, you know, it would need to be, clearly be tied to like how it, how it helps lead to or create that impact. So there's no like magic number about like it should be X percent versus, you know, um, like you might not even, even if you ask HSC that question, you, you might still not get that kind of specific answer. That's still really helpful. Yeah, I'm sure as we dive in, we'll have more questions. Um, but it is really well organized and clear and um, I think gives good guidance to respond in a meaningful way, so. Well, that's very nice to hear coming from you, especially. Oh, the second I looked, I'm like, this is the best RFP I've ever seen, all of us. Like, wow. it's so good. Yeah, so clear, so awesome. I, I could tell that people who've worked on them were helping to create um, the design. It's awesome. And Sarah, um, I don't know if you've already looked at the whole schedule or if the group that you're working with has looked at the whole schedule of training and TA on HSD's website. But like today's office hour sessions, we intentionally set them up so that they're based on what tier people are thinking of applying under. But the future office hour sessions will be more general. Um, and that, so like, you know, if depending on where the group is in their process and if you're finding that, oh, now there's just new set of questions that have come up, like anybody can sign up for office hours at any time with any questions and it'll be like today where we'll just see what questions, you know, need to be addressed, but it doesn't have to be specific. There isn't like a specific time slot you'd have to sign up for, for targeted impact. And then there's the one-on-one -on -one TA sessions where like for a targeted impact application like if there's a if there's a small team of people that want to attend together to get mm -hmm. that individualized assistance that's fine too uh, okay. we're just asking like to have a primary person sign up and then we're using this google sheet for those one-on-one -on -one ta signups and then just if you know, like list who else might, who else might be coming, um, you know, and, and people can sign up for the one-on-one -on -one at any time. I mean, we're, we are trying to limit it to one individual TA session per application, just to make sure we have enough slots for everybody that wants that individualized TA. Um, so the group that you're working with would have to figure out like what, what, <laughs> What would feel like the right time? It's the right time, early or late or in the exactly, yeah. exactly. But uh, so that could also be starting to spin on. I'm like, hmm. Yeah, I mean, it it kind of seems like it's you know these office hours might be a good chance, like while you're still in that brainstorming or trying to formulate ideas or see if that you know has potential for an idea. Like the group office hours might be a good place for that. And then when you feel like okay, we've got something more solid, we have some more specific questions we want to get ideas and feedback on, um, that's when the one-on-one -on -one TA might be. But like anybody could attend multiple office hour sessions, like there's no limit there. So <laughs> could attend every time with, <laughs> with new questions. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's great. All right, well, that's helpful. I feel like that gives us some action steps to move forward on. We'll likely send the question to HSD, the, um, the stickier, harder one, and just see what we might get back, sign up for some of these opportunities, or at least consider um, you know, how to fit those into our schedule. And, um, and yeah, attending, just seeing what other resources are, are here to help be my next steps. 